We all want to stay healthy as possible. Yeah, I actually caught up with a professor in the UNF Nutrition and Dietetics program to get some advice. Today we're talking about high cholesterol, how you can manage it and maybe even prevent it. So with us today, we've got registered dietitian and UNF nutrition and dietetics instructor. This is Jamisha Leftwich. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So I know a lot of people struggle with high cholesterol, um, but what exactly is it and how common is it in the U.S.? It's a great question. So in order to answer that question, I think it's important for us to understand what cholesterol is. So cholesterol is basically a waxy substance that's found in animal foods that we consume as well in, in our body cells. So cholesterol has many functions in the body. It's important for regulating hormones and vitamin D. It helps in um, digestion as well. And there's, when cholesterol moves through your body, it travels on a protein. So when you have that combination of cholesterol and protein together, that's called a lipoprotein. And the two types of lipoproteins that we have are HDL, which you commonly hear as that good mm -hmm. cholesterol. And then we have LDL, which is that bad cholesterol. So HDL cholesterol is that good cholesterol because it gets rid of that excess cholesterol out of our body. And the HDL cholesterol, that bad cholesterol, what it really does is it increases in our, in our arteries and causes that plaque, which can lead to some negative effects that we don't need. So high cholesterol is actually when you have too much cholesterol in your blood, or you have an imbalance of that HDL mm -hmm. and LDL cholesterol. So not enough HDL and too much LDL in your body. And you mentioned how prevalent it is. It's very prevalent in the United States. There's about 95 million Americans that suffer from high cholesterol. And cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death for Americans for both men and women. So what are signs and symptoms? I mean, are there any? Well, unfortunately, there aren't any symptoms of having high cholesterol. The only way that we know that we actually have high cholesterol is by having some blood work done with your doctor. So more specifically, a lipid panel. And so the issue with high cholesterol is that when we have that plaque buildup in our arteries, that can actually block the flow of blood in our arteries. So that can lead to like blood clots, heart disease, or stroke. What are some ways we can prevent or even manage high cholesterol? Well, one important thing is dietary factors. So there's two important nutrients that we can watch for or look for in our diet. And that includes fiber, and the second one is saturated fat. So it's really important to increase our fiber content that we're eating. And so it's recommended to have about 25 to 30 grams of fiber in our diet per day. And more specifically for reducing cholesterol, you really want to look for that soluble fiber. And a good way to remember that is soluble fiber, when it comes in contact with water, it starts to swell. So this is going to be like our oatmeal, our whole grains, uh, our beans and lentils, nuts and seeds, and of course, fruits and vegetables. And the second nutrient that I mentioned was looking out for saturated fat. So saturated fat comes from animal-based products, but most of it's also in uh, plant-based products such as coconut oil, palm oil, and some of our processed foods like baked foods or baked goods. So just making sure that we choose low-fat dairy products like low-fat milk, yogurt, and cheese, switching out butter and lard for healthier unsaturated fat oils like olive oil. We also want to avoid trans fat by looking at labels. And lastly, choosing some omega-3 fatty acids like salmon, uh, ground flaxseed, and walnut. Okay, that was going to be my next question, though. You mentioned saturated fats and meats. So can we still eat meats other than salmon um, and still lower our cholesterol? Definitely. It's all about balance and moderation. That's the most important part. So when you're choosing proteins, try to look for lean proteins because they have less calories from fat. So when you're choosing um, different types of meat, take the skin off of, say, for instance, chicken or turkey. That's going to help to reduce the saturated fat. You can also choose less fatty meats, less marbled meats. So choosing meats that aren't high in fat, like your organ meat. Also, you can think about how you're preparing your meat. So making sure you're baking them and grilling them rather than frying Okay, so we don't have to give them up. That's going to be good news for a lot of people. Um, so I want to know, what about lifestyle changes? So lots of research has shown when we increase our exercise to at least 150 minutes of moderate activity each week, we actually raise our HDL cholesterol, that good cholesterol. So that's very helpful for us. Wow. Yeah. So secondly, it's important to quit or reduce how much cigarette or nicotine we're getting into our body. So quitting smoking, because when you're smoking, you actually lower that good cholesterol. So quitting smoking would have 
do wonders on your cholesterol levels. Wow. You hear that, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And lastly, you want to limit how much alcohol you're intaking. Because actually, if you're overindulging in alcohol, that can reduce your good cholesterol as well. Wow. I feel like I've learned so much. Thankfully, I do eat oatmeal, so I know I'm on the right track there. But where can people go for more information? Definitely. You can always visit the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website. It has lots of great information and resources about cholesterol. All right, Jamisha, thank you so much for your time today. Like I said, I feel like I learned so much and hopefully we can help some people with high cholesterol. For more information or to see this segment again, go to firstcoastliving.net.